So continuing in our unit on developmental psychology, we are going to talk about moral development. The most famous psychologist here is a man named Lawrence Kohlberg. And what he actually does is he talks about this issue of morality. So the first thing we need to do is define what morality is. Morality is our sense of what is right and wrong. And because there are so many different people in a pluralistic nation and in a pluralistic world that have so many different ideas about what is right and wrong, this area can get a little iffy and a little difficult. There are a number of universal principles that the vast majority of people on earth live by and do accept as right and wrong. So it may be a lot more black and white than we actually think. This, by the way, can actually spin into a fascinating conversation. And if you will actually look in the links section under Harvard Justice, uh, you will actually be able to bring up a video that does a good discussion on this whole topic, which is not really the purpose of this particular, um, <clears throat> this particular video. The purpose of this video is just to give you a very concrete um, idea of Kohlberg's three stages of moral development. So let's start with the first one. Kohlberg basically used, when he was reasoning in terms of moral development, he used a, he used a test which is called the Heinz Dilemma. The Heinz Dilemma. And so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to put the Heinz Dilemma up on the screen for a second and allow you to read it so you understand where Lawrence Kohlberg is getting his research from. The Heinz Dilemma A woman was near death from a special kind of cancer. There was one drug that the doctors thought might save her. It was a form of radium that a druggist in the same town had recently discovered. The drug was expensive, but the druggist was charging ten times what it cost him to produce. He paid $200 for the radium and charged $2,000 for a small dose of the drug. The sick woman's husband, Heinz, went to everyone he knew to borrow money, but he could only get together about $1,000, which was half the cost. He told the druggist that his wife was dying and asked if he would sell it to him at a cheaper price. He also agreed to pay the full amount when he was able. The druggist said no. I discover the drug and I expect to make money from it. Heinz became desperate and broke into the man's store and stole the drug for his wife. Should Heinz have stolen the drug for his wife? Why or why not? Based on how people answered this question, Kohlberg put them into three categories, either pre-conventional, conventional, or post-conventional when it came to their moral development. Okay. As people gave their answers to this, Kohlberg put them into three categories. The first is what's called pre-conventional. A pre-conventional person answers moral questions based on the idea of avoiding punishment. So a pre-conventional answer to the Heinz dilemma would be that Heinz should not steal the drug because if he steals the drug, he may end up going to prison. The reasoning here is completely egocentric. It is focused on Heinz himself, and it really negates the concern that Heinz should have for his wife's life, which would seem to somebody who is in a much higher stage of moral development to be a lot more important than the property rights of the person that is refusing to sell the drug. The second stage is what is called a con the conventional stage. And at this conventional stage, a person is able to move past the idea of personal gain or loss, and they look at the moral choice not through their own eyes and whether or not they're going to go to prison. They look at it based on the values of society overall. They look at it as if they're trying to make the moral decision based on what society deems as acceptable, okay? Because in the end, if they do what society deems is acceptable, they are going to fit in with everybody else, and they may even become a hero. So a conventional answer to the Heinz, Heinz dilemma might be that Heinz should go ahead and steal the drug because he could save his wife, and society would view him as a hero in the process of doing that. The third moral stage of Kohlberg is what's called the post-conventional stage. In the post-conventional stage, um, 
basically this is the first time that morality um, and societal rules are examined instead of just being blindly accepted. So a person in the post-conventional stage actually looks internally for what they believe. So you'd have things like personal conviction coming in here to uphold justice. Um, somebody in the post-conventional stage would actually answer the Heinz dilemma by saying, Heinz should go ahead and steal the drug because his, wife, his wife's life outweighs the store owner's personal property. That person has achieved a very high, according to Kohlberg, a very high level of moral development. Okay? Kohlberg took a lot of criticism, down here at the bottom, Kohlberg took a lot of criticism for this, his ideas of morality. His ideas of morality and his stages of morality are very helpful as a tool to examine how morality develops in people throughout life. But when we look at Kohlberg, a lot of people criticized this for two reasons. They said, number one, that there was a real gender bias here. Because of the time period that he was doing this in, he used primarily young males to answer the question. And there has been research since then that might suggest that women would answer the question in a slightly different manner, although a lot of that has actually been largely negated um, in the fact that, for the most part, it, it appears that gender is not a major issue in the development of moral. The, uh, morals, I'm sorry. The second issue in terms of criticisms of Kohlberg is that Western values, because he was primarily using Europeans um, and Americans, that he was not addressing the concerns of Asian society or the concerns of, you know, as far as Asian society goes, how the Indian population or how the Chinese or the Japanese population would answer that same question. In the eastern part of the world, the values of a group are very often put over the values of an individual. So post-conventional might look very different. A person might go along with society, not because they're attempting to go along with society, but because they overall believe that that is actually the correct way to answer such a moral question.